Before getting into details, we should ask ourselves why do we care about climate change? Climate change is a global issue that affects the future of our planet. Recent climate models predict that if no action is taken to limit it, by the end of the century the global temperature could rise up to 6 degrees and the sea level by more than 1 meter, causing unprecedented damage to the global environment, economy and society. One of the earliest actions taken at the international level to tackle climate change was the establishment of an international environmental treaty known as the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, UNFCCC, that was signed in 1992 by 163 states. The objective was to commit themselves to reduce the emission of compounds responsible for climate change, known as greenhouse gases. An extension of the UNFCCC Convention is the Kyoto Protocol that was signed in 1997 and entered into force eight years later. This protocol obliges developed countries to reduce current emissions on the basis that they are historically responsible for the current levels of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. The latest goal settled by policymakers was depicted in the Paris Agreement in 2016 whose aim is to keep a global temperature rise well below 2 degrees Celsius, above pre-industrial levels at the end of the century, and to purse efforts to limit the temperature increase even further to 1.5 degrees Celsius. But how and why do global temperatures increase? How is climate change related to air quality? To answer these questions, we should first have a look at the Earth's energy budget. The Sun is an endless source of energy for our planet. The energy it provides to the Earth comes in the form of solar radiation, which is a portion of the electromagnetic radiation spectrum. In particular, the electromagnetic radiation spectrum is classified by wavelength and range from short wavelengths that corresponds to highly energetic radiation such as gamma and X-rays to long wavelengths or low energetic radiation such as micro and radio waves. The sunlight radiation lies in the ultraviolet, visible and infrared regions between the borders of the electromagnetic spectrum. In the figure on the right, you can see the solar irradiance in watt per square meter per nanometer reaching the top of the atmosphere in yellow and the surface of the Earth in red as a function of the wavelength. Seen, part of the solar radiation is filtered through the Earth's atmosphere. For instance, a large portion of the harmful UV radiation is filtered in the stratosphere, mostly by the ozone layer, while infrared radiation is absorbed by other gaseous compounds such as water and carbon dioxide, also known as greenhouse gases, or atmospheric particles depending on their optical properties. In terms of key figures, around 30% of the radiation emitted by the Sun is reflected back by clouds and atmospheric particles, as well by the Earth's surface. On the contrary, the remaining 70% is absorbed by the atmosphere and the Earth's surface, thus heating the planet. The absorbed energy is converted back to heat through long-wave radiation emitted back to space. A large fraction of that energy stays trapped in our atmosphere by greenhouse gases. The dynamic physical processes of absorption and emission creates an equilibrium, also known as the energy balance of the planet. Any disruption to this equilibrium is called radiative forcing. In the current assessment reports regarding the future of global climate, modelers predict four different scenarios named representative concentration pathways or RCPs depending on recent estimations on the evolution of greenhouse gas concentrations. The RCPs are the product of collaboration between integrated assessment modelers, terrestrial ecosystem and climate modelers, as well as emission inventory experts. The plot on the right shows the estimated positive impact to the radiative forcing, that is to say, the extra energy trapped on the Earth's surface in watt per square meter, predicted in the four RCPs. More precisely, the RCP 2.6 in green, RCP 4.5 in red, RCP 6 in black and RCP 8.5 in blue, corresponds to the anticipated increase of the radiative forcing relative to pre-industrial values by 2.6, 4.5, 6 
and 8.5 Watt per square meter, respectively, by the end of the century. Furthermore, according to these projections, the mean global temperature could rise up to 1, 1.8, 2.2, and 3.7 degrees Celsius by 2100. Furthermore, recent projections indicate that the increase of global temperatures make the Earth's climate more unpredictable, leading to a dramatic change in the frequency of extreme events. In a normal climate, the probability of extreme events can be visualized like a classical bell curve, where moderate weather events are much more common than extreme events. However, climate change shifts the curves to the hotter side, moving the average down, and flattens the curve. This combination provides for a dramatic increase in record hot weather for our planet. To conclude, based on scientific observations and model predictions, the future climate of the Earth is changing, and the main reason for that change is the intensive anthropogenic activities from the pre-industrial revolution to this day, the emission of primary gaseous pollutants such as greenhouse gases, the release of particles, also known as aerosols, into the atmosphere, both strongly impact the radiative budget of the Earth. The projected changes will also affect air quality by enhancing the formation of secondary pollutants that participate in the photochemical smog. These issues will be the topic of the next three videos of this week.